Hello my fellow YouTubers, this is Roy back again. I want to thank you guys for all your comments out there. Decided to think out of the box here. So for the video that I posted on how to build a DC oscillator, I was thinking if people don't have a good vibra um, a vibrating set of coils, such as these fine ones. What if you just had a set of contacts here that have a make and break in the middle? <clears throat> so I happen to have this set up the same way as I had the this on front and this is for you guys out there who doesn't have that apparatus just find yourself a set of points this is just a three-way contact and it's like a switch that you could get off a old ac air conditioning condensing unit let's rock and roll let's um let's put the contact i got the two car batteries or two car batteries my bad. Two um, alarm batteries. And we're just coming out of that into the contact. We're having the same setup with the coil, which is using the one primary. Let's go ahead and turn the wheel. That's the problem I have. I gotta win. I don't quit, guys. So for you, for those of you at home who would like to, don't have transistors, don't have capacitors, this is a beautiful way of demonstrating electromagnetic pulse through DC means. This is uh, energy coming in from the back EMF um, of the primary coil. These would be all the secondaries. And look at it, and it buzzes. So it's a buzz box in between. On, buzz box. So it's still a um, still a DC oscillator.
Still an oscillator. And these magnets here are all north facing out. And I have the north side showing up here and the south side over here. Morning, morning, Will Robinson. We found new ways of making oscillation. Warning, warning. So, if we want to check the oscillation, let's put on the zig generator. And we're going to turn it off being a generator. And we have it on the extension in. And we're going to put it right here as a as a counter. So it's going to count right now. Zero hertz. Let's hook up the front of it to one of the feedback coils. And we got to find a pin. So we're going to say right here is one. And here is one. All right, let's go over here. reading the hertz of not the vibrator where is it pretty interesting now let's get it turning Not registering good. Take it off. So when it's in between the magnets, right there is the frequency. That frequency, I need to read off of something. Reading it off of this right here wasn't a good idea, which is the back EMF. Pretty sure this becomes an antenna. Whatever that frequency is, that will act like an antenna. Not the high voltage. Look at what that little heat cup was. Well, it's 
move it out. Sounds like a good Model T Ford humming. Look at the angle of the field, the magnetic field come out. Straight up, two, two batteries, nothing else connected. Turn the generator off, not worrying about frequency right now. So we're just coming out of the positive into the start of the coil. Doesn't have to be a bi file, it could be a single coil. And we're adding the positive into the coil, and we're going into the back end of the coil because I wanted to make sure you got a, if your magnets are on the north facing out, you want that side there to be a north, so it's pushing away, and that side to be a south, and you gotta figure out which way to put the magnets in and how you turn that. Regardless of which way you turned it, you don't need to turn it like I turned this one. This one here is four different, four different, uh, for a different application. This here uh, turns the magnetic flux inwardly. And these are some studies I'm working on. Um, we'll get into that later. Obviously, I don't want to talk about it because there's some exciting things there. This is straight up, just turn either just one way. This one happens to be, I believe, 300 turns of 26 gauge wire. And, um, so positive in is to, to, to the back end, in this case, could be started the back end, but into your primary wire. Coming out of the um, primary wire, and we're going into one end of the, the vibrator coil, or the vibrator spark gap. And then coming out of the other side of the vibrator spark gap, we're going to the negative. And here I'm combining two 12 volt batteries. Got it humming pretty good. Now remember if I stop this, it becomes an oscillator in between. And if I put magnet close to it, it stops it. You guys got that? You pull it away, the oscillator starts. Best oscillator around, guys. I wish somebody taught me this seven years ago. Oh my lord, would I be in heaven right now. Oh my my. Let's do this. We're going to push that outward in the direction of how the opposing is. It should run smoother. Doesn't seem to like it. Let's it up close. So we turn the opposite way. Have fun with it. Enjoy it. Expand. I expect videos out there with taking this and making a monster out of it. One thing this did get me excited about is the fact I can do this. I believe on Ed Lee Scallon's wheel he had those bottle capacitors hanging up on the wall. And they were dangling and um, in the picture he's got them covered but they had those contacts in those and the bottom were broken out so he I just learned what Ed Lee Scallon was doing in with those bottles and he has contacts in those bottles so think about Ed 
being able to make an oscillator. This oscillator can be wound in any way, meaning any size coil, any size wire, and any amount of turns. So if you were looking to, say, levitate rock, it to me seems now with being able to build an oscillator, and that's what I believe Ed did inside his wheel in those, in those bottles hanging up, that he wound the coils precisely. One, enough current, and two is, an, uh, is, is a frequency and high voltage. So what he was able to do was get the frequency and the, and the flow um, matched to the tripod. And at the tripod, with those chains coming down from the box on the top, he was able to get, if you notice that every boulder, well, at least in the tripod pictures, he's got, let's go to this picture. My Ed Lee Scallon breakdown. In this picture right here with the tripod, and then this picture here with the tripod, and you see he's got one tripod picture up here. There's two cables hanging down, and there's the box up top. And I believe that this thing right there is actually this thing hanging sideways. And notice there's a metal pipe there, and it looks like right up there is some type of antenna or some type of connection that that would be. And with being able to make a frequency, direct the current, the two cables coming down, every rock that he lifted out. Let me see if I have a picture over here somewhere. The rock, the boulders he lifted out, he put a, a iron rod through them. And think about that. So he's taking the middle of dead center of the stone he's boring a hole in it he's putting the rod in there he's creating an inductive inductive core because he's coming in through both sides whether or not he comes through the whole thing and it runs through and he connects both sides which i don't think that's the case but i think there's a break in the middle inductive so all the all the atoms inside that coral will whatever how its lattice is set up for it to be coiled with its protons neutrons and its electrons the once you alter that there you're able to manipulate the molecules inside and have them separate at that point you, you would have a, a block of stone that would be weightless because you, you don't have the opposing eddy currents that would take that stone and the difference between the, the stone and the earth would have a pull down from that rock. Well, hopefully you enjoyed the new oscillator setup. This is for my bro hands out there, my bro girls who want to build a coil. Um, there is a uh, calculator out there on the internet. It's called Tesla Java. Java. And it's a great calculator uh, for building Tesla coils. Now, what you'll learn through that, whether or not you're building a Tesla coil, it's important because what you'll learn from that is uh, diameter of wire, length of wire, frequency of that wire based on a thousand feet you can not get complicated on trying to figure out what size wire you have uh, what length of wire you have and what frequency uh, natural resonance now a natural resonance of that coil so that natural resonance of the coil you can figure out real quick with the java or going on to a wire chart and you can see the diameter wire 
they base it on the length for um, for a th thousand feet and how many ohms of resistance the wire has, and also you you're, you can figure out the frequency of based on the ohms, which would be based on the length of the wire. And you got to know this stuff if you want to really make the true setup coils of, of what your uh, purpose would be. Ed Lee Scallon, he had to, he had to figure out what the density of of the flow of the current and what uh, resonant frequency of, of um, a vibration that that rock would uh, allow the molecules to separate themselves in between the iron rods. And think about the iron rods back then. They weren't so uh, uh, polluted like our iron is today. It was more called rock, rock iron, where the iron uh, was uh, more um, uh, more concentrated of iron and less minerals or additives on the outside. See the frequency go up? Magnetic flux from the wheel? Still. Still slowing down. Listen to the field change order. Listen to the... Coils aren't even warm. Oh. I didn't get into this yet, but we'll get into this real quick. So whoever doesn't watch the whole video <clears throat> will miss out on the best part. My next video I'll get into is going to be um, still not explaining exactly what's going on with why you counter rotate your coil, but we'll get into the level before that, which is treating the um, treating that core and that winding around that core as a primary. And then what happens when you take that primary and put two opposing coils over the top of that primary in a oscillator setup? Now think about what I'm challenging you guys on this because I want your comments and that's I already know and I've been I'm playing with this and this gets to a next level of this whole thing I'm putting out there for you guys especially you guys that will have your workshops and really this is this should give you a boner uh, girl or female this is going to give you a boner on on exactly this whole electromagnetic universe the the electric sea we'll call it so here's your primary your primary has a bunch of little pins in it, which uh, help keep down the eddy currents. They do a great job, which that means that limits the current flowing through the uh, the core. And then the way this coil is wound is it's wound in in a start off with a um, let me see. So I believe this starts off in a uh, you got to think about, I, I'm not going to even mention which way it starts because I don't want to give you the wrong information, but you got to think if you're taking and winding in a certain way, <clears throat> part of the, the, like a, like a hurricane where if it's turning counterclockwise, like the hurricanes we have on the Northern hemisphere, it's building an outward pressure. If you have a core a coil, that's turning uh, counterclockwise or clockwise, clockwise, it's going to build an inner pressure versus an outer pressure. So what we're doing here is we're starting off, I believe, I'm going to say counterclockwise, and we wind the whole first run, then I take that end and I bring it all the way back with one straight run, and then I start and go to the opposite. So what you'll start off is the core, reaction between the core and the coil 
and then that's the inner of the coil. Then the outer of the coil is being sort of reflected back down, pushed back down, because the opposite winding is canceling out that projection. So what you're literally doing is taking a whole sine wave and you're making it a half wave. And I repeat that over again. We'll just leave that there. We'll leave that there. That's the primary. Then here's the secondaries. And we're going to show some experiments. It's going to be pretty, pretty mind-blowing. No heat, nothing. Oscillating. It's amazing. I like this one better. Talk about influence. Electromagnetic control. It's so close on taking magnetism and electric. To me, this seems to be the closest lower level of the energy to where physically, or I can see the magnetism and the electric spark reacting to each other. What the heck just happened? All right, I just got shocked. So, there's some stuff happening down here with ground. I just got buzzinated. Maybe that wire was touching that. Whatever's coming out of there just got me good. Can't do it while that wheel's turning. I almost sucked the thing out of my hand. Dini should be turning in his grave with this. He needed a transistor to tap into this stuff. Peace out, my bro hand.